Hey, 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 and we are live. Welcome to the Clutter Corner number two. This uh, week we are streaming actually to YouTube as well because we started last week and in our private hoarding world group last week, which was an awesome place to show this, we discovered that lots of people contacted us and then they asked us for a link and the, the feed gets lost somewhere in the Facebook and it's not search engine optimized like it is on YouTube. So we're also streaming today from YouTube in the event that we need a link later or you ever wanna revisit this again. So thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Facebook. This is a super exciting time for us. And I wanted to jump in real quick with a couple of the people that joined us last week and hear their updates. I know that in the private hoarding world Facebook group, there were lots of people that jumped in and they added their photos and their stories from the things that we talked about last week and then the changes that they made in order to um, go back to the, um, the, the progress and stuff that they've made. So I have Sally here with us and we will start with Sally. And Sally got rid of a bunch of nail polishes. And while she was going through her nail polishes, she did some really amazing things. And uh, Sally, I was hoping you could share with us just a little bit about your experience with last week. Hi, I'm Sally. Uh, last week, yeah, I get rid of some uh, nail polish that have been dried up or the oil been separated and things like that. Uh, so during the weekend, the last weekend, so I do with my youngest daughter. So in the backyard, we kind of spread out the newspaper, kind of empty out the bottle and then uh, dispose it, let it dry it up and dispose it. There's a proper way to dispose the nail polish. So it kind of uh, environmental, I mean, uh, safe for the environment. And then uh, that's it. Then my youngest kind of play around with the nail polish and create some fun art. And, and you know, it was interesting uh, when I saw this art, I was like, oh my goodness, that looks like an amazing painting. I would love on the, on the wall. <laughs> and I was <laughs> wishing that you guys would have autographed it because I would have bought it back from you. I think it's amazing. <laughs> so was it, was it sad for you to let go of them or did you feel a sense um, of accomplishment? Not really kind of fun. I mean, when, when you dispose it, you look at the color and then you know, I mean, some of, some of them you can really see is bad. Some of them kind of smell a little bit. I mean, not just a normal nail polish smell. I mean, it kind of have some funky smell. But the good thing is you kind of get rid, you get to play. It's it kind of fun in a way. Like, yeah, then I get to spend time with my youngest daughter. So I don't know, it's a fun project. But just by one thing that I had to remind, if somebody still want to get rid of nail polish in the future, do in the outdoor. It is very strong smell, a strong smell. Even after I get rid of it, kind of it on the odor on our body, even walk in the house, they still can smell like, wow, it's really strong smell. Because it's a lot of bottles, you see. Yeah. And so how long did it take before the smell wore off of your person? Uh, I know for me, I went to shower. I don't really smell on my body, but in the house, even people like my oldest came back after a few hours. The moment she walked in the house, she said, whoa, it's a lot of nail polish in the house. You can smell <laughs> it, yeah. Even though I do in the backyard, I didn't even do anything in the house. It kind of very strong, yeah. Got it. Well, yeah, that, that's I'm it. so that's glad. Good. And I, I just want to give you a, a special thank you for sharing that with us. And then also kind of um, jumping into our, our Facebook group during the week. I know there were a couple of other people that jumped in and showed their photos and their items as well. And I was really excited about the opportunity that you guys took to do that. So thank you very much. Uh, so let's you. jump over to Rita for a second. And Rita, share with us, if you will. I know you got rid of some T-shirts last week that were some you decided to keep and some you decided to get rid of. Uh, yeah, so I went through six t-shirts with you guys last week, and after the show, I decided I might as well go through my whole t-shirt collection, and we had talked about keeping, like, 15 t-shirts and having, like, that set number of how many I wanted to keep and making sure I stick to that, so I've spent the week going through my endless t-shirt drawer and figuring out what I want to donate and keep and I'm going to get through the last of that this weekend and then I can share with you all all the shirts I decided to donate outside of just the six that we went through together um, but it's been a process. <laughs> Well, great job. Um, I know that because we had this conversation and this is what happens when you start decluttering and you start having conversations. Even if you are a professional house cleaner and you're helping a family go through their belongings, you start having conversations with yourself and saying, wait a second, 
I have some t-shirts I could get rid of. And I know I did that myself. And so I was donating some t-shirts that I had been working with a client on. And as I was putting them in the back of the car, I said, I have some myself. So I ran inside and I grabbed some out of my own closet and I added them to the collection and I got rid of them as well. Thanks to this conversation we had last week. So thank you guys. Great job. And uh, today we're going to move on and talk about grocery bags. So this is a really fun topic because lots of us have lots and lots and lots of grocery bags. Now, there was a time when you would go to Walmart or the Harris Teeter. I know those are the grocery stores where, near where we live. And this is how you would bag your groceries. And then you would go out to your car and load up your car. And as a professional house cleaner for almost 30 years, one of the things that we've done is we've recycled these and we've taken a, a big stash of them on all of our jobs. Because when you get to a customer's house, oftentimes they will have these small garbage cans that are underneath their bathrooms and stuff, but they don't have any liners in them. And so we would kind of like gift them some liners because it removes the need to clean the inside of the garbage bin itself. And so we've recycled them for years. Um, I'm curious, and I, I see that we have Judy here and we also have Alicia. I want to stop and say hello to Joanne. And um, we've got Lau back again from last week. We've got lots of fun folks here. Hello and welcome. Um, Judy, I'm going to add you to our stream and, and just say, hi, how are you doing today? Are you with us? Who? Judy, are you with us? Yes, yes. I don't know how to use this. Uh, oh, doing... well, you're using it now. Would you like to share with us an experience about grocery bags? Yeah, that was really cool. Yesterday, um, yesterday, I, I knew you were going to do grocery bags. I, I'm kind of glad we didn't do nail polish. I don't want to get rid of them last week. Um, this is my first time here. And I thought, you know what? We really need to go through them. And I was going to donate some, but something happened. I don't know. So most of our groceries are now pick up with the store bagging it in their bags. We've got our, I've got, both of us have bags in the car and in the trunk. And it's a little out of hand. I, I have bags that go back to the nineties. Okay. When I worked at Carnation, I have a bag from that. And so we, I, I brought them in from my car and my husband is playing some game and I says, you can help. Help me figure out which ones to keep, which ones to toss. Well, I think we had so much fun with it. He went out and he says, wait a second. And he ran out to his car and got his. We have like over 25 bags that we want to give. I hope they take them all. But if they don't, because some of them are kind of old looking, but they use the, the, the charity uses them for um, uh, bagging up stuff that people buy. They don't want. Well, are, are you talking the about the reusable ones? Are you yeah, talking about the ones like ones. this? Yeah, the reusable okay. ones. They give those out for, for packing up stuff. They don't want the other bags. And we take those other, the, the store bags back to the store and they recycle them. Uh, but but it's it's a nice thing. So we have those big Aldi bags. We packed them up. We only kept like eight or 10 each. We don't need that much. We really well, and that's don't. one of the things, that's one of the things that I wanted for us to, to make a, a decision on today. How yeah. many is enough? Yeah. And I know that when we go grocery shopping, we do use the Aldi bags and the, the freezer bags. This is like a, a big freezer bag that you can put yeah. like frozen goods in. Uh, this is a, a Lidl bag, not an Aldi bag. Um, but when we, uh, when we keep those in the back of our cart, we have them with us, but we have three freezer bags and then we have probably about six or seven of the just the reusable they're like heavy duty plastic we have six or seven of these and that is about our limit because we don't usually buy more groceries than that and we just have them in the one car and that's the one car that we usually take to the grocery store uh -huh. and so how many how many and i guess that's a real conversation how many is enough what would you say judy i i would say limited at 10 uh but i mean in case something happens to some of the bags um half dozen is probably what i'm going to use to go i probably only need two you know two or three but i i, I couldn't give them up i i mean if they fit in the in the bag and and the car is neat see i i i need them my car every friday okay and if if they're laying all over the place i don't want that so i think i think i'm four in the car uh, and, and maybe four in the trunk. 
for me. You know, I just feel bad. I'll probably, you know what? Sometimes I declutter and then I go down farther later on. So I may go down to four or five. Well, one of the things that's interesting about the grocery bags, and we're talking about the reusable bags in this exact right. moment, but right. the reusable bags uh, for the most part are like 10 cents for the plastic ones that you get at Lidl or Aldi. And I think the freezer bags are like a dollar. And so if you ever got rid of them and then later you regretted like, oh, I made a mistake or whatever. I yeah. mean, you can always buy one for another dollar or 10 cents or whatever. That's true. I always wanted one with the California bear on it anyways at Ralph. <laughs> Well, you know, it's, it's, part of Kroger. it's interesting because there are a lot of companies and they will use their reusable bags as an ad specialty. And so if you go to a conference or something, there's usually a bag that they give you. Yeah. And it's really cool to be at the conference, like with the conference bag, because now you've got all the loot from the conference. But after the conference, what do you do with that bag? Right. And so we bring it home and oftentimes it gets put in the closet and then it gets stored or shifted around the house or whatever. And you end up with lots of those reusable bags. So um, would would you like, oh, we've got um, Alicia's here. And I have uh, I have a message here that says one for cold items and three for max regular groceries. Yes, I, I would agree to that because if you have, if you have, um, if you have, a limited number of things that you buy. I know that I buy all my groceries at once. So for me, that number three goes up to six bags <laughs> and I buy everything at once. And then I don't go shopping for a few weeks and I try to just eat out of my pantry. Um, but I would say, I would say that's a fair number without having an overabundance of them. Um, talk about the, uh, the cloth bags for a second. Um, what are interesting uses that you guys have used for those and should we keep them or should we recycle them and, and give them away? Sally, do you have an opinion on that? Uh, I will keep some, like now I have two in my car and then another maybe like three, few in my house. I don't keep a lot because I know that it just sit there and it won't be touched. So the most I use, even that one in the house, I don't use another cloth one. I only use the one in my car. So two is max for me for now. I mean, so far, yeah. Oh, oh, so, oh, oh, oh. Judy, go ahead. I'm all excited because you've inspired me. I could repurpose it. Okay. I was going to buy some, you're talking about can, the canvas. The, I have these cotton bags and um, I've been, I made myself a pillow out of a pillowcase for my, for my back for the car. And I said, I really need to buy some material to make a pillowcase. I made the pillow. I need the pillowcase. I could repurpose that and just cut it off and make a pillowcase. Does it have the bear on it? The California bear? No, it has the Nestle logo on it. Oh, because that one would, would make a great pillow, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll get a plastic bag. I'll treat myself. That's a nice thing. I'll get that bear. Yeah. So um, in the house cleaning industry, one of the things that we do, whether we like it or not, is we take lots of cloths into customers' homes, and then we clean their house. And when we're done with the cloths, those cloths have to go somewhere. And so it's been very easy over the years to have the cloth reusable bags and keep them in the back of your car, because then you can sort them. You sort them as you go. And we've always used these uh, plastic bags inside the customer's house because they're small and we can wad them up, fit them all nicely inside a, a cup inside our cleaning caddy. Then when we fill them up, we have you know, a yellow one for the bathroom and a green one for the kitchen and an orange one for the furniture. We've got a bag that then has specifically designed colored cloths in them so that um, we're not cross-contaminating. And then when you get out to the car, you empty them out inside the cloth bag and then they can air out a little bit while you're at the next customer's house. And that's always been really great because then when you go to do your laundry, you literally have this bag of cloths that's already separated and it just goes really nicely right inside your mesh bag that you then put inside the, the washing machine. And so it's kind of a, a nice transfer program, but then it's, it's always, always separate. And so that's been a good way for us to reuse those add specialty bags or those cloth totes that otherwise would just kind of pile up in the house. Um, I do have, I do have a lot more than I need though. And so what do you guys think is the perfect number for how many cloth totes you might use um, or, or keep if you're not using all of them? Rita, do you have an opinion? 
Um, I personally don't use cloth bags at all. <laughs> I actually don't really have any. Grocery bags is probably the biggest thing that I save from every single trip. And I probably have close to 100. I have a roommate that I share a house with and we all like compile our grocery bags in the pantry in like a larger paper bag. Um, we've never set a number on it, but it is constantly overflowing. We definitely have way more than we need as far as the grocery bags go. Um, so I think maybe I should invest in like one or two cloth bags so I can be more sustainable and reuse those at the grocery store rather than collecting all these plastic bags that we're never going to get through. So uh, let's go back to the plastic bags for a minute. And thank you for sharing that because that's it's it's nice to hear people that say I don't use them, therefore I don't have them. And I, I, I love that we are having these conversations because when we decide I don't use them at all, it makes it really easy to not have them or to say, oh, I could replace the plastic ones with a cloth one and that would make more sense. Um, I've talked to the people at Walmart numerous times over the years and they've got a great big monster cardboard box that they recycle these in as you walk into the door. And a lot of people bring just big bags of them and they dump them inside. And my question wasn't, can I dump mine inside, but can I have some of yours? And so because we've used them and reused them for cleaning customers that have all the, the little bins underneath their bathroom sinks and stuff, we've used a lot of those. And if I don't go to the, the grocery as much as I should, and I don't buy, I don't have a lot in store, you can pick them up and recycle them directly from the store. They said, hey, they are designed for recycling. Take as many of them as you want. We don't want many of them, but maybe I'll get a bag of bags. And then how do you store them? And so I know for my house, um, we've stored them and a, a lot of our customers do this as well. This is a, a pretzel container from Costco. And so we just reuse these plastic jugs because we don't want these in the landfill either. But then we just use it because it's got a wide lid. So they stuff in pretty easily and then they also come out pretty easy. And that way we have one in every bathroom. And so if, if there is a small um, trash bin underneath the sink, instead of buying garbage bags or liners for those, we just reuse these grocery bags. And so that's another way that we've been able to, to justify having the smaller garbage bins. But we consciously went through, and we've done this with several of our customers, we've gone through the little bins that they've had in their house and getting rid of the, the 13 gallon ones and getting them to be smaller so that we can recycle the grocery bags that they're using. And so there are ways of doing that as well. Um, if you collect a lot of plastic bags, not the tote bag, but the disposable type, save them up and donate them to your local thrift stores. First, find out if they buy brand new ones or recycle. That's a great idea because this is a great opportunity then for them to have those bags as well without having to, to give away new bags and buy new bags. Because right now they don't go in the landfills very well. So that's great. Um, another thing about the, the grocery bags, and these are just the plastic grocery bags, they work really, really well as packing peanuts. And so instead of buying the, the really expensive styrofoam peanuts or the, um, th they're like little bags that blow up and then they're all hooked together. Those are expensive, but you can mesh a whole bunch of little grocery bags together and wrap things in them and, and store them or ship them. And that creates extra packing that, that is then protected. So there's a way to do that as well. Um, a comment here from Mother's Helper. She says, there are also many people who will take the plastic bags and use them to make tote bags and they sell them on Etsy or mats for the homeless to sleep on and donate to shelters. That is a great idea. Um, there are lots and lots of uses. The Albertsons box is open and folds into a flat square and it holds a fair amount of weight too. Um, I don't know what that's in reference to, but maybe we could recycle those boxes as well. Um, but the 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 grocery bags, um, you can also take a grocery bag that just looks like this and take it inside the store with you and recycle it and use it again for your own groceries. <laughs> and I know that that's, that's an easy way to do that if you have extra and you have them in your car. Um, so let's talk for a second about uh, gift bags because gift bags are one of those items that you can access easily. I know they sell them at the Dollar Tree and there are all different kinds that are uh, gift bags for birthdays, for Christmas, for graduate uh, graduates, graduations, holidays. Um, and so do you guys have an opinion on gift bags? Yeah. Judy. 
As soon as you said gift bags, I just remembered all the Sephora little bags that have been piling up over the years, and they're just sitting there. And they're too small to hold anything. I need to get rid of them or do something. I, you know what? I'll offer them up on uh, Free Cycle. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. There, there are lots of different uses. And if your family has a rule about gift bags, like how you use gift bags, then it makes it easier for everybody in the family to participate if you know what those rules are. Um, I've got a couple gift bags here. This is a happy birthday bag. And this was probably bought at the Dollar Tree um, several years ago. But the rule at our house is when it comes with the little tag on it, we leave it blank because if it said, hey, Angela, happy birthday, it's going to make it hard for me to re-gift this unless I tear this tag off, which you can always just tear it off. We just leave it blank and then we re-gift the bag with a gift in it. And then when it's someone's next birthday, then this bag is coming back. This bag has come back to me a few times and then I fill it up and I send it out again. And then it comes back to me. And then there's, there's a bigger bag. We have a bigger bag in our family and it's a little bit more worn. It's kind of wrinkled, but oh well. Again, it's been recycled and it has the empty... <laughs> the empty tag in it, which is kind of cool because every time this bag comes back, we're no, not the snail bag again, you know, but it's, and it's a joke now because it keeps getting recycled from person to person, but it's part of our, our family culture because instead of waste on things that we're not going to use, this is an opportunity for us to, um, to reuse it again. It still looks nice and looks pretty, but it avoids us having to um, buy wrapping paper. And so we end up saving on the wrapping paper and then just putting stuff inside the, the gift bags. Um, so we've got a couple of questions here. Uh, we save the gift bags because they lay flat until they look bad. That's a great idea. And when it comes down to how many do you need? We have a great big storage bin and the storage bin has a lock lid on it. So it keeps dust out. And we have all of the birthday ones on the bottom and all of the Christmas ones on top. And then anytime it's someone's birthday, we, di we dive into the, the bottom of the bin. We know exactly where they are. And we try to keep just an even amount so that we can, you know, give away gifts for one year to the members of the family and friends and what have you. And then we know that we're going to be getting gifts back. Not, not, not that we are expecting them, but we usually do. And so then when those bags recycle back, then we just restock the ones that we have. Now, the cool thing is this. We always know that we can buy them we can buy more of them for a dollar or two if we need them. But just by having them and having them in a bin, everybody knows where we store that gift bag bin. And so that's a great way to do that. Uh, Bernie says, we save the gift bags because they, oh, I read that one because they lay flat until they look bad. And Rebecca says, literally the gift bag that keeps on giving. <laughs> I know, right? This is really great. Someone says, ha, 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 we did the same in my family. Oh, that's awesome, Hilda. You and me, we're twins. That's great. Um, and Denise says, I use canvas totes in my bathroom as hampers and string bags for kitchen laundry so wet stuff doesn't mildew. That is really important because as long as we're recycling the stuff that we have, and these are the canvas totes, um, it does air, allow it to air out a little bit without it being trapped and the moisture being trapped inside a bag. Now, the trapped moisture bags, we're moving off the topic for a second of gift bags, um, but there are totes. We're going to talk about totes today as well. But um, here is a tote, and I've had this tote for about 20 years, and I don't really know where I got it from. It says Jordache style on it, probably back in the 80s. That was like the thing. Um, but I like it because it's waterproof. And so whenever I go to the fitness center, I throw my gym clothes in here, and if it gets wet, if it gets moist, if it gets mildewy, whatever. I mean, like, you know how the, the bathing suits get all wet and uh, I throw them inside the bag until I can get back home and then run it through the washing machine. And so that keeps the moisture out of my car and also from leaking and stuff like that. So I would say one waterproof tote for the beach or for the pool or for if you carry rain gear back and forth to your, your appointment or what have you. Um, that's probably a good a good thing. Um, uh, Jennifer says, my sister and I would pass post-it notes on the gift bags for tags for holidays. I love that idea. Instead of the note, instead of the, the uh, note, the cards, a post-it note. That's so awesome. That's really great. Um, the holidays can get tricky. Yes, that's true. 
And I love I love the post-it note concept. Um, I'm afraid I may have missed I may have missed a couple of these notes here. I swiped the bags from Walmart bin all the time and nobody has ever gotten after me for it. I take them and I just give them to the thrift shops. Um, yeah, you know what? I've asked several times. There are people that work the, the Walmart, like, hi, welcome to Walmart. And we're going back to the reusable bags now. Um, and they say, uh, I've asked them several times, do you mind if I take some of these? And they've all said, no, please, please take them because we pay to recycle them. And so if you want to use them and you want to recycle them, that's great. So there's a, a larger conversation here. And the conversation is how many is too many? And should we reuse them or recycle them or re-gift them or repurpose them? And I think with grocery bags and tote bags, you can probably do all of the above. I think there comes a time when you might decide you have maybe too many of one or the other. And then that's where you have to have a conversation about how many is too many. Um, Sally, what would you say is too many? Mm, when they overflow, I guess. But I have a few tips that are how I use my grocery bag, my plastic bag. I love to cook. So when I cook, I'll put one or two plastic as I prep. I cut whatever and I throw it right away in the bag and I tie it up and I put it in the bigger trash. And then another thing is after we eat the leftover like bones, it can be chicken bone, fish bone, one not, same thing. I put it in the grocery bag, I tie it up, I throw it in the bigger trash. And then the house don't smell, you know, because the, the bigger trash will sit for a few days. So that's how I recycle. So I kind of my amount of plastic bag, it's like a good amount. Because I shop about one once a week. So I use up about, I mean, the same amount I use. And I use for all the trash in my house, a smaller bin, like you said. So my trash bin stay clean you know, in a way. And once you're dirty, you tie it up. So yeah, I, I make use of it really well. So I don't have overflow of a grocery bag in my house, yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. I know that I do the same thing when I'm cutting up watermelon and we have a rule at our house that we have to get the watermelons on Sunday and then cut them up because <laughs> the garbage comes on Tuesday and we want to send the rinds out with the garbage on, on Monday so that we, they don't smell up in the garbage can all week. But we will double bag those as well just in a grocery sack and then tie them up and then put them inside the garbage and then ship them off so that they're not, you know, we don't have a compost area where we are that that won't attract deer. And so if we put them out, we've tried in the back of the property and then we have deer that come and they eat all of the watermelon rinds and then they eat all of our plants and trees as well. So we had to stop doing that. We had to start packing them up. Uh, Denise says, I use all the cooler bags to hold the food while cleaning fridge and freezer items from the deep freeze. And that is a wonderful idea. I would, I would love to learn more about that process. Um, but I, I, I think that's a fantastic idea because we do, we do do a lot of defrosting as special projects, even in the cleaning business. And so we have to take the food that's in the freezer and put that somewhere. And using those freezer bags from Aldi or uh, Lidl are great for that because it will keep the food cold without fully defrosting until we can get a chance to put those back where they go. Don says, I know I'm the bag lady at work. I use them for work, church, and I also have one for my medications. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, as the bag lady, what what does that mean? Uh, tell me more. Are you are you able to join us on camera, Don? I would love to to have you come on. And I don't have the link here in front of me, but I would love to to have you come back. Um, and a Facebook user says, I do the same thing with my food scraps to keep my garbage from getting smelly. Yeah, I, I think that's a fantastic way to do that. So that, um, like uh, Sally said, with chicken bones so that it doesn't smell. Because I know if you have um, chicken bones and things like that in your regular garbage, a lot of times it can attract wild animals that are outside at your curb. And so we don't want them knocking over the trash and getting into the rubbish and what have you. Um, I'm looking at these notes here. I don't wanna miss anything, you guys. This is so fun. I love meeting with you guys. This is so great. Um, Jennifer says, one of my clients, my cleaning clients neatly fold their thin plastic bags and reuse them for trash. And they only keep a baggy sized cardboard box under the sink instead of having a bag full of bags. Um, that's, that's funny that you mentioned that. I know that some people do fold their bags. My mother is one of these people and I love my mother dearly, but when she comes to visit, she'll take all the bags out of our buckets and she folds them all in these really tight, nice little packs 
and she has them all sandwiched together and then she puts like a little rubber band or bows around them and then there's like a little stack of folded up grocery bags and then we'll use those for a while and then I'm like oh no I'm out of the folded bags it's time for my mother to come back and visit again <laughs> ah, that's great all right so are there any questions so far any questions that you guys have about what we've talked about today I don't want to take up your whole afternoon, but I did want to I did want to have this conversation because as we declutter our homes and as we go through some of our stuff, it's easy to just hang on to stuff but never really know why. And if there's a purpose for it, it gives us a chance to then make a decision like I'm going to have three totes or I'm not going to pick up any more totes. I know for my personal house, my we have plenty of totes, and these are like the uh, the the free the the waterproof kind. And so if I go to a conference now and somebody tries to give me a tote, I'll say, no, thank you. I have enough. Right. I've now cut myself off at the limit. Like I, I know what I'm using my existing totes for and I won't be buying or having any more. Um, Bernie, Bernie Burnsify says, but what about homebound people who get groceries picked up or grocery delivery? That's a really great question. Um, I know that like uh, Judy said, Lots of people are having their groceries delivered and they deliver them in the canvas bags because they don't want the plastic bags. And so maybe it's an opportunity to recycle them at the same stores. Like if you have a Harris Teeter bag and it's a cloth bag, you recycle that back at Harris Teeter again. And so if those bags come from a store in your area, they would probably gladly take those back so that they can recycle those to people. Um, I also know that like my sisters and I have a, a clothing swap. We're all, I've got five or six sisters and we're all about the same size. And so whenever we go to a family reunion, we will load up those cloth totes with clothes. And it's a great way to recycle clothes and the cloth totes. And then we get to a, a family reunion and then it's kind of like a swap meet where we're all like, oh, hey, I, I like that shirt. Oh, I like this, whatever. And then everybody goes home with a tote of new, not new clothes, but recycled clothes. So it's another way to kind of like share things with people is just by putting them in a tote as a, as a gift. Um, TG says, I use double bag paper bags with handles to move from my first apartment since it was easier than lugging boxes that were too heavy. Uh, yes, that's fantastic. We did not talk about paper bags today, but I know a lot of people are really into the paper bags instead of the, the plastic. Um, do we have any more comments or ideas about that? Conversation needed and appreciated. I missed the first part. Suggestions on where and how to store the grocery bags again. The grocery bags, and we're talking about, we'll talk about these, these first. The grocery bags that are small here can be stored any number of ways. Um, again, we store them in a plastic bucket that has a wide mouth to it. This is just a big gallon, maybe a gallon and a half jug. And it's a three pound jug. But then it allows just for easy access when you wanna use and reuse these. And what we reuse them for, again, is we use them for like small trash bins and we use them for sorting different things. Like, again, if you're at the pool, um, I know that um, inside even my big my big waterproof bag inside, I keep a couple of those grocery bags in here so that if I have a wet bathing suit, I can put it inside there and then it doesn't you know, get my bigger bag. And it is waterproof, but it, that way it's easy to, to take out and put inside the wash. Um, there are different ways that you can use the packing. And like somebody said, you can, you, that, you know, they'll store those and put those inside matting. And uh, I didn't know if you knew this, but lots of companies will recycle foam and these grocery bags as like furniture packing for when they are just looking for stuffing. So that's another way to, to help recycle them without them going into a landfill. Uh, Denise says tote bags can hold umbrellas, mittens, stockings, stocking hats and scarves and other weather stuff with the command hook thingy. Yes, Denise, you speak my language, the hook thingy. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, what's really cool about the, uh, the grocery bags because they do have a handle, you can also hang them on the back of any door. And so I know that um, even in our house, sometimes we'll throw like dirty socks or you know things that need to go inside there that go to the wash and we'll just throw them over the banister. And then when we go back downstairs, without them lying on the floor, we'll just take the bag and take it downstairs with us. And so that's that's another way of doing that. Um, so guys, this was a really great conversation. Use them for your pets to pick up dog poop. 
Ah, I was hoping that that wouldn't be brought up, but yeah, that's a, a good way to do that. Um, if you had a, a pack like this, as you went outside to walk the dog, you could then pick up the poop along the way. And I've always had a little issue with um, carrying the poop with you. I think it was Jerry Seinfeld who carried a coffee cup with a lid on it. And then he said he just scooped up the poop and put the lid back on it so that it didn't look like he was carrying a bag of poop. <laughs> And then somebody said, oh, yeah, Jerry, I saw you out walking your dog having your morning coffee. And Jerry was like, that's not my morning coffee. It's dog poop. <laughs> so I think I think that there are there are fun ways to to make sure that you pick that up. But the bags, having the bags and having them at your disposal is a great idea. And then also, like Judy said, keeping them in your car so that you have them if you're out and about and you find that you need them. Uh, Bernie says, I've been de-stashing my paper, crafting stash and getting rid of things. And it's been so liberating. You guys, I got to tell you, getting rid of some stuff is fantastic because it does make you feel great about making progress and cleaning up the stuff that's in your house. But as you have these conversations with yourself, it also changes the way that we behave in the future. Are you going to be using grocery bags? And if yes, Let's make sure that we have a way that they are easily accessible. Let's make sure that they are in places where when we need them, we're going to use them instead of going and grabbing, you know, new, new garbage bag liners. If there's some that we can already recycle, if we have a cloth tote that we can use instead, that's, you know, let's have those on hand. And like Sally said, keep them in her car. I know Judy says she and her husband keep them in their cars. And so that way it, regardless of what car you're in, you have the stuff that you need. So do you have what you need on hand? Are you using it? And then how much is too much? All right, I'm going to let you guys get back to your afternoon. But I think this was a really great conversation. I'm super glad that we did this. Um, we will be meeting again this time next week, doing the same exact thing. Um, but during the week, we're going to go back to Hoarding World, which is the private Facebook group. And I don't have the link to give you. Um, is that is that something one of you guys could add into our notes? And if it is, come on over to the group if you're not already a member, because then you can post pictures of your stash of um, uh, gift bags or your stash of grocery bags. Count during the week how many totes you actually have. I think many people find they've got a whole lot more than they realize. I know when I started counting mine, I ended up with a great big plastic bin of totes. And of course they lay flat, but I had probably 20 or 30 of them. And I got rid of all of them except probably four or five. And like Bernie said, to stuff them and have things ready to go. I know that for years I was giving away books. And so I would carry boxes or those tote bags full of books and I would drop them off at a destination. And so in getting rid of those, Whoever ended up with a tote got to keep the tote, right? But then making a conscious decision to not bring any more into the home because I have plenty. And so that's that's the place we want to get is discovering how much is, is plenty for each of us, right? I don't want you to go without your totes. I just want you to know when is, when is enough enough. And also the same with the gift bags. Um, I've got plenty of gift bags. And although everyone in the family is not going to be super happy to get this one back again, I got it right now. Yay. Um, but how many is enough? And in the worst possible case scenario, we can always go buy more, right? But many people have too many. So then give them away and don't buy any more until you've used them all, right? All right, that's it. Do we have any more questions or anything else that we want to cover before, before I let you guys get back to your day? Judy, anything from you? Oh, I see the note up here from Hoarding World. Thank you. While we are talking i've gone through look at this i folded all the packing paper you know for like gift bags i'm not sure what to do with these but i'm tossing some things i love this you're working tossing, you're, right? you're making this a working lunch this is so awesome this is fantastic yeah, yeah well yeah i have add i can't wait to do something so i'm limiting how much tissue paper in different colors for the gift bags and I think I've got four or five gift bags that aren't Sephora. And yeah, and I, and I found a, something that I bought, like some keychains uh, with the with the uh, pray, traveler's prayer on it that I could give to someone because I have one on mine. Make sure my husband has one on it. So yeah, I, yeah, this has been very helpful. And I can limit, this way I can limit how much I have. 
you know, I got to put a limit on it. It's too much. It takes up too much room. I live in Southern California, and, and, and houses are really expensive. So if you go by square foot, this is a very expensive place to live in. So you got to figure my stuff has to be, you know, taking up space. It's going to take up what it needs and no more. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that with us because I know that um, – there, and we've got so many great suggestions, you guys. There was just a, a suggestion that Joanne um, gave to us, and she said she heard of a group that crochets the uh, bags. They crochet them into mats, and that would be a really creative way to do that. And I don't know who those people are, but, yeah, if we have extra or surplus, we would love to, to, to see those be put into use instead of just going into a landfill. Um, there was a documentary done on the bags and what happens when they go to the landfills. And it, it made me really conscientious of how many is too many. And then really being aware, and that's when we started switching to the reusable thicker bags, like the ones for Aldi and, and Lidl, where they just stay in the back of the car. And then when we go grocery shopping, we take them in with us. And so that way we're not, you know, getting an extra amount and we're not contributing to the landfill the landfill issue. Uh, we have a note here that someone says in New York, plastic bags are banned, so we have to buy them. And I just had to replace two totes, but I got rid of the bulk over the winter when looking for plastic ones. So I, I know that lots of areas are starting to put a limit on the bags and they're, or they're starting to charge for them. And that's because they're, they are so wasteful, you know? Um, but I, I do hope that this conversation has been um, as interesting for you as it has been for me. I really appreciate you guys joining me here today. Um, and like I said, we will do this again, same time, same place next week. And until then, join us over in the hoarding world and post your pictures of what you did during the week and the changes that you made. Because like Judy, I'm already inspired by just watching her tidy up and clean up some of the stuff that she has there. So that's awesome. All right, you guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys again next time. Thank you. Bye.